From July 21st through July 24th, 2011, Headphones.com invites HeadFi members to visit them at the Gathering of the Vibes Music Fest in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Gathering of the Vibes has something for everyone. The lineup includes Elvis Costello, Dark Star Orchestra, Jane's Addiction, and many others. Headphones.com will also have several listening booths where you'll have a chance to try headphones from top manufacturers. And HeadFires who attend will receive a free gift card. If you plan to go, please send a private message on HeadFi.org to the username HeadphonesCom, or you can email your HeadFi username to Brian at Headphones.com. If you can't make it, visit this URL to take 15% off your next HeadPhones.com purchase. This offer is only good till July 31st, 2011, so we hope you'll take advantage of it. Thanks for supporting our sponsors. In this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to be talking about this gorgeous piece of gear. I, I mean, I love the way this looks. It's called the SPL Phonator. Now, SPL is a German company known for its uh, studio gear, its uh, pro audio gear. And this was originally intended as a studio pro audio piece. Um, the name Phonator is actually a combination of the words headphone and monitor. And that's what SPL calls it, a headphone monitoring amplifier. And they developed the Phonator to allow the use of headphones in the studio environment when you can't use your loudspeaker monitors or if you simply feel like using headphones. The challenge with headphones normally in the studio is imaging. Um, headphones and loudspeakers image very differently and of course the recordings that we listen to are almost all made for listening through loudspeakers. So the imaging is just so different on headphones that it becomes challenging. Now the key reason for the, well one of the key reasons uh, for the differences in imaging between headphones and loudspeakers is something called crossfeed. So to put it simply, if you're listening to loudspeakers and you're listening only to the right loudspeaker, your left ear can still hear it. And if you're listening only to the left loudspeaker, your right ear can still hear it. With headphones, it's different. When you're listening to the left, it's only on the left. And when you're listening to the right, it's only on the right. And again, that just changes the imaging. We're used to it with headphones on, but it makes mixing and, and monitoring in the studio difficult. And that's where the phonator comes in. SPL developed a very, very advanced crossfeed circuit for the SPL Phonator. It allows very fine adjustments to be made, and we'll go over that in greater detail later. It even allows you to simulate, in a virtual sense, the speaker angle. Now, the idea is to try to get the imaging locked in to be similar uh, to your uh, loudspeaker monitors, the environment you're used to. Um, and once you lock that in, now you can do the mixing and monitoring through headphones in your studio. Now, obviously, there's another added benefit here. When you go into an unfamiliar studio environment, you can take this with you once you've got your settings locked in, dialed in, and you've got a familiar studio environment now with you through your headphones. I know it's not exactly ultra portable, but it's, some, it's portable enough, certainly, to take with you, uh, again, to unfamiliar studio environments for a sense of familiarity sonically. Now, that crossfeed circuit is also of interest to a lot of head fires. There, uh, there are headphone amplifiers out there in the commercial market and in the DIY market uh, that implement crossfeed. But again, this is just a far more advanced uh, version of it than I've ever used. And I think a lot of HeadFi enthusiasts, audiophile types, are going to like the imaging options that you have available through the, the Phonator crossfeed. Now, as far as price goes, the Phonator is priced at $2,149, which places it at the upper tier of headphone amplifiers. So even independent of the crossfeed, you're probably going to wonder, how does it perform just sonically? And I have to say, extremely well. This is a wonderful amplifier. definitely performs in the top tier of, of headphone amplifiers. Um, the sound, you might worry that it would be clinical because it's a studio piece. Um, but it's not. It's actually not clinical at all. Now, you would want in the studio to, be, uh, to have a very revealing piece of gear. Well, you can check that box because it's extremely revealing. But it does it still with a, a hint of warmth. But it's not a warm sounding amplifier to my ears. But there is a hint of warmth that gives it a sense of, and I hate to use the term, it's a bit trite in audio reviews, but musicality. So it is definitely not overly clinical. Now, from, this, from the standpoint of what it can drive, it'll drive just about anything. It certainly has driven everything I've plugged into it, from in-ear monitors um, that are very sensitive, um, all the way up to this very difficult to drive headphone, the Hi-Fi Man HE6. A uh, wonderfully rewarding headphone when you can find something that drives it nicely, but very hard to drive. And the SPL Phonator drives it nicely. 
Um, so again, great flexibility and drive and great fidelity. So yeah, I think it's definitely performing well into that top tier of headphone amps and something you have to consider and certainly with these options. So now I literally want to take a closer look at the SPL Phonator. As I said earlier, I love the way the SPL Phonator looks. It's such a striking looking amplifier. Um, I actually think it's maybe one of the best, if not the best looking solid state headphone amplifiers in my opinion. Um, one of the things that makes it so striking looking is obviously this front panel. There's so much going on on it, but yet it's so tastefully laid out. So let's talk about what all these things are and what they do. Let's start with the obvious one, which is in the middle here, the volume control, which actually is worth mentioning because it's extremely buttery smooth. And most importantly, it has very fine volume adjustment. Some volume controls are far too aggressive. You turn them just a little bit and the volume goes up way too high, way too fast. But with the Phonator, again, very fine volume adjustment with so far with every headphone I've tried with it. And that's very important to me, very well implemented. Over to the left side here, you'll see a control called Solo. And all that does is when you flip it to the left, you'll only hear the left channel. When you flip it to the right, you'll only hear the right channel. And of course, off, you have a normal stereo image. This control here is called the phase reverse switch. And I don't have any need for it, but if you're a pro audio guy, you probably do. And what it does is you flip it to the left and it reverses left channel phase, inverting it by 180 degrees. If you flip it to the right, it does the same thing to the right. In the middle, in phase stereo image. The mono switch is self-explanatory. Flip it on, it sums both channels to mono. Now let's move over to the right side. Um, this dim switch, if, if like me, you don't tend to read product manuals when you first start out, I thought that this was going to dim the lights on the meters. And uh, that's not what they do at all. Um, what the dim switch does is it reduces the listening level, the volume level, by 20 decibels. So if you have a really, really sensitive headphone, um, that you want to use with the Phonator, that can come in handy. And if, in the, if you're a pro audio or a studio guy, I'm sure you have other uses for the dim switch. These two switches here um, are, are uh, adjustments for the meters. The meters, of course, monitor input level. And again, these are very functional. They're not just there for looks. Um, they allow you to monitor input levels and they're very fast and responsive meters. Um, this meter calibration switch um, lets you adjust the sensitivity of the meters. And this lets you choose the metering mode. On the left, uh, VU mode, which is standard metering mode, and then peak meter mode to allow you to monitor, monitor the peak input levels. Now, I also mentioned earlier the crossfeed functionality. And we already went over why you'd use crossfeed. I want to just now go over how it's implemented or how it's controlled with the SPL Phonator. Again, it's done on the Phonator completely in the analog domain. Um, it's not using DSP or any digital processing. So, to activate crossfeed with the Phonator, you simply turn it on. And what's really nice with the, the crossfeed is how flexible it is. You can adjust the intensity of the crossfeed. And then you can also, to, uh, to simulate the speaker angle that you might have with your monitors, your speaker monitors, um, you can try to simulate the angle by adjusting the virtual speaker angle with the SPL Phonator adjustment here. So 15 degrees to 75 degrees, you can adjust your speaker angle. Now over here you'll see, this is also related to crossfeed, is the center control. If you flip it on, it allows you to decrease the intensity of the center of the image. And the reason that you'd want to do that, or you might want to do that, is when you use crossfeed, it can lead to a little bit too much center emphasis. So this is the only amp I think I've used that has center de-emphasis. You can actually move the center of the image back by minus 0.3 dB all the way to minus 2.0 dB. Um, I've only used it in the first three settings. I haven't really found a need to go much higher than that or to go any higher than that. Um, so I've used it between minus 0.3 decibels and minus 0.9 decibels. I really like the ability to use the center control when I'm using crossfeed because I have found that reducing the center image just a little bit or reducing the center intensity just a little bit can make it sound more natural um, as far as the center balance with respect to left and right, um, similar to when you're just listening in normal stereo mode. So I really like this center control. As far as build quality goes, the SPL Phonator is designed and made in Germany, and it actually feels and looks like something designed and made in Germany. There is simply not a line out of place. Every panel fits together perfectly. It is extremely solidly well built. And I know I mentioned that the volume control is really nice and smooth, but actually all the switches that I showed you, all the controls, 
feel smooth and very high quality like something that you might use on the dashboard of a really expensive luxury sedan. So as far as design and build quality goes, the Fonator is absolutely top notch. So the SPL Fonator, it's built well, it sounds fantastic. Um, I love the crossfeed functions and, and I want to mention that just one last time because I do think anybody who buys a Fonator will definitely use the crossfeed functions. And if you've ever been interested in crossfeed, I can't think of a better amp to recommend. But again, the fidelity is great and it has great drive. It can drive just about anything from in-ear monitors all the way up to the HE6, my AKG K340s it drove really nicely. And I really need to mention the Sennheiser HD800 because it's so popular in the community, but it can be challenging to find a really good match for it. The SPL Fonator along with the Luxman P1, easily the two best sounding solid state amplifiers I've heard with the HD800 so far to my ears. And so if you're an HD800 user, this has to be moved to the top of your list if you're looking for a solid state amp to drive it. Um, it's just a wonderful piece of gear, $2,149. To me, it's easy to recommend, really easy to recommend. So I love the SPL Fonitor, highly recommend it. This is Head Phi TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.